Uh, today we're hosting for Portugal.com and it's our second webinar with Portugal.com now covering of course the latest news with Portugal's golden visa and the ups and downs and the roller coaster that it is over the past few months since the Prime Minister of course has been keeping us on our toes as to how long the plan is going to be in action and um, of course any things like the rule changes and what we need to do, how long we've got, of course we're fielding a lot of questions a lot of people have been panicking, for some people very excited, people rushing, and hopefully, like I said, give everyone uh, overall good news, really, uh, today, because we, we finally have uh, a little bit more of an of a, uh, insight as to what the government is thinking. And, um, yeah, we've got a bit more of a, of a kind of definitive plan, somewhat. We still don't have everything that we'd like to know, but we're, we're, we're kind of getting there now. We certainly know a lot more than we did back in February when the first announcement was made um, about the closing of the programme. And we saw all those headlines about, about it's all finished, it's all done, it's um, gone, done, gone, gone for good. But uh, of course, we are still fully uh, in action with the plan. Um, the Portuguese Gun Visa is still fully open. And we'll, we'll talk about that today. I'll give you a full update on what's been happening uh, locally and uh, what we, what we feel is going to happen with the programme over the coming months. Um, so the, the itinerary for today, uh, first of all, yeah, so we're going, to, uh, we're going to cover, as we go through the slides, I'll be covering some key topics such as how long uh, we have now to apply for the visa, uh, what is the likely cutoff date for new applications. Um, what I'm going to give an overview on, on what the Golden Visa is for those that have just started their Golden Visa journey. Uh, if you will, so you know, to kind of bring you up to speed with what the program does, what it offers, what the benefits are, and how it compares to you know, other visa options here in Portugal. Uh, I'm going to show you some of my personal picks for properties that qualify for the program across Portugal, uh, starting from the minimum entry criteria of €280,000. Um, I'll explain who can be included on the visa as well. Uh, one of the benefits is that you can add your family, you can add children, you can add your partner, you can add your parents. Hopefully, uh, adding parents is, is a good thing for most, but uh, you can add family members. I'll talk through the criteria for family as well. And uh, yeah, like I said, we'll go through, I'll show you some, I'll showcase you some of the, the properties. I'll give you a snapshot as to the remaining availability on, on some of the top developments in Portugal as well. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, uh, you will find a Q&A box. Um, so the end of the session, I will be hosting a live Q&A, which is the, the real focus. I want to try to get through as many questions as I can uh, with the limited time that we have now uh, to, to submit applications. Yeah, I'm keen to make sure I've got as much information as possible to make an educated decision. But my diary course will be available for appointments uh, from, from Monday onwards if you want to go into more personal uh, discussions. However, for now, yep, please, as I'm going through the slides, you can just add in your questions at the Q&A box at the bottom, and I'll make sure I cover everything before we finish. Uh, we have until the hour, uh, about seven o'clock here in Portugal. Um, I'll get through the slides relatively uh, quickly this evening to focus, as I say, on that Q&A session. Uh, for those that have not kind of listened in to any of my webinars before, just to introduce myself, my name is Jason Swan. I'm a senior partner at Holborn Assets. Uh, we are a wealth management practice uh, internationally, not just here in Europe, uh, but our, our main focus of our business is actually wealth management and financial planning. Uh, I specialize and am regulated and qualified, of course, to give financial advice to new residents of Portugal and, of course, other countries, covering off anything as far as financial planning, tax planning, visa assistance, uh, any don't any questions about moving to Portugal generally, I can, uh, I can have a good go out. But uh, focusing there generally as a financial planner. About six years back, uh, Holborn introduced a particular part of the Holborn group, if you like, which was designed around achieving citizenship and residency in different parts of the world, in different countries. Portugal is just one of different, many, one of many different uh, citizenship programs that we offer. And in particular, of course, Portugal's investment program is the Golden Visa. Uh, I moved to Portugal about two years ago now. Uh, I live in, in the Algarve. Um, so I've, I've kind of jumped through different hurdles and uh, all the, uh, uh, the not so fun part of, of moving countries uh, to get to where I am now. And I can assure the sun is shining 
and uh, I've recently bought a home here uh, in the Algarve. And yeah, I'm certainly very happy. I'm very biased towards the Algarve. Of course, you can be uh, anywhere in Portugal. You can go across Lisbon, which is uh, much more built up, much more across the city centre. You have right up north in Porto, which is an incredible city uh, as well. And you have down in the Algarve, where generally you find it's a little bit warmer. Uh, the beaches are slightly uh, more attractive, but uh, overall, you're not going to go too far wrong, uh, no matter where you end up. Uh, but previous to Portugal, I, I lived in Spain for five years uh, in Malaga. Um, and uh, previous to Malaga, I was uh, originally in the UK, uh, in Manchester. You might be able to pick up a slight twinge of Manchester accent still. I'm not particularly good with languages, neither Spanish or Portuguese. Very good with numbers, but not too good uh, on the language front. But hopefully everyone is English speaking as well do this evening. So uh, without further ado, I will get stuck in and I'll take you through a few slides. So. Starting with a, an introduction to what the Golden Visa is. So the program was introduced uh, back in 2012, uh, and it has been one of Europe's longest running, most successful uh, citizenship programs. Um, and it's been now tried and tested with over 11,000 successful applications to achieve EU citizenship after the five years. The visa itself is a two year visa. Uh, it gives you unadulterated access to Portugal for you your family, uh, and every two years you can renew that visa. And you could renew that visa every two years for the rest of your life, should you wish. However, after five years, uh, you can apply for your passport and your permanent residency, which will mean that you then effectively receive 27 passports all at the same time, because it gives you then full access to live, work, and enjoy any of the EU countries. And um, so, yeah, other than that, my, the company uh, ourselves, we have processed over 10% now of the world's golden visa applications. Uh, we have a 100% success rate with our applications. We've never had an application declined, which we're very proud of. Uh, that's generally down to a lot of due diligence that we carry out before making any recommendations uh, to certain qualifying investments. But also we spend a lot of time with our clients making sure that there is no reason that you're going to get involved in the process and find yourself being declined halfway. That's the program. Um, I think I've covered most. Uh, I'm sure I've missed something, but we've got the essence of it, I think. So during that time, the Golden Visa is kind of like a, a VIP pass to Portugal, if you like. And those that are fortunate enough to be able to invest into a qualifying investment enjoy all the benefits of being a Portuguese citizen. Apart from, you cannot vote and you cannot run for president. But apart from that, you're treated just like any other Portuguese citizen, which includes access to the healthcare, and includes access to one of, some of the world's leading education. Uh, for those that don't have an American passport, I'll explain why in a moment, a benefit from a very favorable tax treatment called NHR, uh, which is a, a, a big incentive for new residents to have a, a very low rate of tax on their overseas income. Um, if you do have a flavour for learning the language, uh, try, of course, try and, try and stay away from the English areas of Portugal. It's much easier if you do live in a, a more kind of Portuguese uh, district, if you will. But overall, a very nice standard of living, overall low cost of living compared to some parts of the world as well. Uh, so lots, lots of attraction as to why Portugal, but don't forget after five years, um, the they kind of uh, the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, if you will, is, is that passport, and that is a European passport, which means that you can live in any of the European countries. Uh, Portugal is very much seen as the kind of gateway to Europe. Uh, it has the, the lowest entry requirement for citizenship, uh, and it also has the fastest time to achieve citizenship in just five years. As well, um, the you know just next door in Spain, it's ten years to, to get a European passport. Uh, but again, any questions on those? Anything about Gen Portugal generally? Uh, anything about the benefits or the process that we've covered so far? Again, please drop me questions in the Q and A box at the bottom. I'm happy to come back to them shortly. Now, I'm not going to touch too much on tax. Not the most exciting topic. Uh, however, for those um, that Again, don't have an American passport. 
um, it can benefit from NHR. And before I go into what it is, uh, the reason why NHR is not particularly useful for Americans is that America is one of just two countries in the entire world that continues to tax you, unfortunately, even if you move away. So regardless of the Portuguese tax incentives, you're still going to be tied to the US tax rules until a point should you wish to decide to sacrifice your US uh, passport for the Portuguese one. So in short, there's not a huge incentive for Americans, but uh, otherwise, um, for the first 10 years that you live in Portugal, you can apply to be taxed under a quite a unique tax regime called NHR, uh, which allows you to have a low or no rate of tax on your overseas income. Uh, if you're still working, uh, if you are um, either self-employed or employed, if you work within a certain capacity, uh, you may qualify for a flat rate of just 20% income tax. Uh, for pension income, okay, that used to be 0% until recently. It's not, still not too bad. It's still at 10%. Um, on income such as dividends and rental income, that's when you really have the incentives because there's no tax at all uh, on dividends or rental income for the first 10 years. Now, the caveat to that is that the income must be coming from a country that has a tax treaty with Portugal, which covers most of the first world. Um, but again, if, if you have any personal uh, queries on that, please ask Malcolm for whether or not you can qualify for NHR. But in the main, most do, and it is, like I say, an incentive for the first 10 years. Now, one common misconception that comes up is, can I apply for NHR with the visa? Um, now, just to be clear, this, this is a tax regime that you can apply for when you physically move to Portugal. So you cannot, for example, live in another country and be taxed under NHR. You're still a tax resident where you live, regardless of whether you have a visa to live somewhere else. So the NHR only really applies when you physically move to Portugal, um, which may be straight away, or for the majority, if you're considering the golden visa, uh, the likelihood is you're not looking to move immediately. So this is something maybe to look forward to in the future, um, but one to bear in mind. Uh, again, part of my role, I, I work as a financial planner. As you get closer to um, moving to Portugal, uh, I, will, I will conduct a, a free uh, financial review, if you like, of your circumstances and explain to you if you know, the likes of NHR is applicable, how to structure your income, and how to minimise your taxes, uh, both during the 10 years, but also after the 10 years is finished as well. There are certain investment and savings vehicles that you can utilize as a Portuguese tax resident, which actually allows you up to a 60% discount on your income after the 10 years is finished as well. But on that note, like I said, loads of exciting stuff there all about tax. Uh, any questions on the tax front, please drop me a message. I'm happy to go through that. Now, the reason why we're all here, uh, so what is going on? with the visa, the general question being, do we still have enough time uh, to apply? And the last webinar hosted for Portugal.com was, uh, I was talking a lot about headlines at that time. And the headlines were all about applications after the 14th, 16th of February won't be accepted. The program is closed, set is closed. It was something like doomsday. I had to explain that a lot of the headlines that you see online are there to attract your attention as opposed to actually give factual advice. Of course, a lot of the publications don't necessarily understand the legal process involved when laws are being changed in Portugal or the process to be followed. Uh, nor, you know, again, the more exciting headline is chaos rather than things okay. However, as it stands at the moment, um, the original proposal was made from the Prime Minister Actually, he mentioned about the closing of the program in November last year. That was the first kind of uh, shock to the system, but it was taken with a bit of a pinch. So, however, it's come back again in February this year, and he's been very, very to the point and explained publicly that the, the golden visa has now served its purpose, um, and there's no longer any benefit to keeping the program to Portugal. Uh, it's also been in discussion that it has had a negative impact on property prices, anyway, that they've gone up. Um, so positive for some, but again, locally in Portugal, overseas investment 
uh, has been talked about as a cause for increasing property prices and putting property for locals out of reach. Uh, there's also a big problem in Portugal about the lack of housing available as well. So there's been talks of pressure on existing landlords that maybe have an empty holiday home to rent out the property to, again, try and solve the problem around the housing crisis. Uh, but there were, there were 16 points, the preliminary change in, in law, the draft of that change in law, there were 16 talking points. Uh, and, and following that, that initial announcement, there was then a, there was a public discussion for, in the end, 45 days, where the public and different sectors within Portugal got their chance to put their comments forward as to these provisional changes. Uh, there was a lot of backlash. Uh, obviously, the, the, the removal of the Portuguese golden visa, which has generated billions of euros for Portugal, has a significant negative effect on many people in Portugal. So there's been a question of, you know, would it actually solve the crisis with property prices? considering there's less than 1% of transactions uh, are actually linked to a golden visa. Um, and, you know, what, what, are, what, are, what are the negative effects of doing that? You, know, you, can, you can start to imagine the, you know, the income, for example, from lawyers or from reality, uh, from pastors, from property maintenance, you know, from there's, there's so many different sectors that are going to be impacted by that loss of literally billions euros of income each year from overseas investment. So it's not been all rosy. The, the backlash from the Prime Minister was considerable. It didn't go to plan. The President himself uh, made a public announcement to say that as it stands, a lot of what is being proposed from the Prime Minister goes against constitutional law and will not be passed. Uh, and that, that, that uh, in hindsight is now, I think, has kind of been realised by the Prime Minister because the the original draft has been kind of really uh, diluted, if you will, uh, and and there's been some good there's been some good uh, reassurance come from that. There was there was a lot of nonsense about retrospectively changing the law. There's a lot of panic about you know, being able to qualify uh, for the visa after two years. Uh, there was talk of um, you know the minimum stay requirements increasing from two weeks to 183 days. So, so there's a lot of panic, and uh, and yeah, the long story short is is hugely been diluted now. So there's still a lot to find out. The, the new draft has confirmed that there won't, you know, no no applications that have already been submitted will be affected in any way. Anyone that's already uh, anyone that is already uh, part of the golden visa uh, over the previous twelve years will continue to be able to renew the visa if they need to. The, the goalposts will not change. Uh, and for new investors, uh, the the important part that we got out of it is the Prime Minister clarified that your application will be honoured under the current and existing laws on the basis that it is submitted before the law comes into effect. Uh, and that there was a question mark over that. Again, there's a lot of press and, and the Prime Minister made a comment that any application submitted after the 16th, 16th of February will not be accepted. But that has now been clarified. That is never going to happen. Um, and it's now clear for all to see that uh, it's full speed ahead. You know, we have until the law actually changes to submit as many applications as we can uh, and to be, you know, take peace of mind that the rules will not change for those applications. Um, so other than that, yeah, that's, that's where it stands. Um, that, that's that's the main bits that, that we kind of need to know. Like I said, there's lots lots online. There's a lot of contradictory information online, but I can assure you that Seth has received no instruction. They never received any instruction to stop processing applications. They're still processing applications as they always have them, and they will continue to do so up until the law changes. Now, the for the law to change, okay, from our calculations and our understanding, our our legal counsellors exactly what has to happen for the law to change. There's going to be a period of time. Now, the public discussion has finished. And the final draft has now been uh, provided. But the next step is now Parliament needs to vote on that draft. Uh, and that's going to take up to 20 days for them to basically put it forward to the President or say, we disagree or some changes need to be made. Um, the likelihood is we feel the likelihood is that Parliament will probably accept 
the draft. They're very close to accepting the draft as it stands. Um, but once they get to that point, it will then be presented to the president who will need to ratify those proposed changes. And that all needs to be done before the law can physically change. So in the worst case scenario, if Parliament do so, yep, everything is fine. The programme is to finish as soon as possible. And the president signs it off thereafter. Uh, we're going to have around 45 days for that to happen, which puts us really at the beginning of June, end of May, early June. Uh, realistically, you know, we, we think we're probably going to have a little longer than that, but in a worst case scenario, it could be as early as the end of May when the law changes. Any applications processed after that date, at this stage, we have no idea what the situation may be. But any, if we can submit an application before that date, like I say, nothing to worry about and we have no negative impacts thereafter. So to give yourself complete certainty that your application will be accepted and you'll be honoured under the current laws, we must submit your application before the law physically changes. It could be as early as May. It could be, uh, it could be the end of the year. We, we're kind of hoping it will be. We, we, we hope, similar to Ireland a few months back, there will be a grace period given. Um, it'd be great to get a few more months uh, to, to, to do that. It'd be great to get to the end of the year. Um, but at the moment, like I said, we can only go off the facts, and the facts are that it is to go as soon as possible, and it could, it could happen as early as the end of the year. Um, the process at the moment, uh, we're able to fast-track applications. Um, we have the provisions to be able to do start to finish the submission of the application within two to four weeks. Okay, I'll explain the steps to do that in a moment, but uh, you still have time. Just take that from me. You have time. The program is open. Uh, it may not be open for very long, uh, but you can still apply for the Golden Visa. Okay, again, any questions? I hope I've covered that uh, clearly enough. Um, any questions, again, please do drop a message in the Q&A and we'll come back to it shortly. Um, but that's where we stand on the current process. Okay, so you've got the green light is the good news. The green light is there. Now it's a case of working on is it something that you want to do um, and who would like to do it. So the Golden Visa, uh, again, you can include family members. It is designed to bring three generations of family with you, if you can. Um, but the way it works, uh, anyone that doesn't already have EU citizenship and apply for the Golden Visa. Uh, and they can include certain family members as well, including the spouse. Okay, you can be married or unmarried, as long as you live together, that is fine. Um, you can include children up to the age of 21, potentially older uh, if uh, they remain in some form of education. And you can include parents as well. Uh, above the age of 65, dependency is automatically assumed. Um, so there's no, no evidence required. Uh, under the age of 65, you do need to prove some form of dependency for them to be included. But yeah, parents over the age of 65, if they have a flavor for traveling to Europe uh, or would like to join you on your travels, relocate themselves, you may wish to include as many family members as you, as you can, all on the one same investment application. So, types of investments. So, the criteria is quite simple for the Golden Visa. As long as you maintain a, a clean criminal record, the only real caveat, if you like, is to find an investment that, that meets the criteria. And this is the current criteria as it stands today. Now, property, property investment accounts for close to 95% of applications over the past year for a number of reasons. Um, but it's not the only option. But if you do want to invest in property, this is how you must do it. Now, as of the beginning of 2022, the government changed the rules. Again, back in 2021, there was talks of the program being withdrawn and ultimately they didn't withdraw the visa. They just changed the rules. Um, I don't think that's likely to happen again. However, um, a bit of history for you. Um, but the, the change of rules was that they made it a little bit more difficult to qualify and, and said that you can no longer qualify for the visa with a residential property in any of the main cities. So anywhere such as Lisbon, Porto or the Algarve, 
basically anywhere on the coast with tourism, um, you can no longer buy a, a residential property, such as a holiday home, or somewhere to use on Airbnb. Um, it must be now a commercial property. Okay, my commercial, another, another, another way of putting that is for business purposes, really, um, or, or an investment is a hands-off investment. It's not somewhere for you to live. You might be able to stay there, um, but you, you, wouldn't be able, you wouldn't be looking to live there. Okay, and the two, the two criteria that you can choose from generally is you can buy a share in a hotel. Okay, you can become a, a co-owner of a hotel, uh, or you can buy a property. You can buy an apartment or a home within a hotel complex. And there's 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 advantages of both options. But yeah, you have to buy commercial in those main areas. Um, if you do want to buy residential, you can still do that. Um, but only very much inland Portugal, where you, where you don't have the same tourism. But if you do want to live inland and you can find a home in the next couple of weeks, then you can still buy residential property uh, inland Portugal. Now, the price, the qualifying price for an investment is 500,000 euros. Um, however, that can be reduced, and it can be reduced, first of all, if you buy a property in a low density area, uh, of which you get a 20% discount bringing the investment to 400,000 to qualify. Uh, the only way to bring that further down is if you invest in a commercial project, which is going through a full government approved renovation, where the building is over 30 years old. If you do that, you can qualify at 350. But lastly, if you can do that in a low density area, then the minimum comes down to just 280,000 euros. As a general rule of thumb, the closer you invest to 500, you'll find that the investments are much more profitable as standalone investments. Uh, you'll find, for example, uh, bigger rental income or more incentives or more free weeks to stay there, things like this. Um, whereas at 280, the benefit is not that it is profitable, but the fact that you get the passport and the visa with literally half as much money. So it's just really finding a balance between and what I'll show you some examples of those shortly. Other than property, uh, from 500,000, you can qualify by going into an investment fund. Okay, there's different risk rated investment funds. You can have low risk, medium risk, adventurous, all have an element of interest payable. Um, the, again, the, the caveat being is that the funds must invest at least 60% into Portuguese assets. So these are not the type of funds that you would choose from on the open market. Uh, but there are a selection of funds to look at. Uh, the returns generally vary according to the risk. And actually, they have a variable rate of return. They can also lose money as well. Um, you know, the, the, the stock markets generally have been quite volatile over the past few years. The minimum criteria increased from 350 to 500 last year. So the demand for investment funds has generally decreased compared to a few years back. You know, it was more of a kind of a 50-50 split, you know, five years between property and investment funds. But as I say, 90, 95% now in property. The, there, there are venture capital funds as well. You can qualify through. There's some, some very wild and wacky projects I've seen uh, that qualifies as a venture capital as a project looking to acquire capital for, you know, a development of a new wind farm, for example, or perhaps uh, the, uh, the creation of a, of, uh, of a new farm in some way, or something to do with Portuguese uh, economy and, and the, the, the better of thing that you're know, investing in, into Portugal itself. But again, that carries a, a lot of decision making, a lot of research, a lot of time. And again, unless there is a particular type of project you really want to get involved with, it's often too much involved for your, your, your typical investor. Uh, you can purchase or set up a Portuguese registered business from 500,000 as well and employ a certain number of staff for a period of time. Um, and you can also transfer one and a half million euros into a bank account in Portugal for five years. Uh, again, yet to find anybody that has done that. Uh, naturally, Portugal is not the most, shall we say, regulated. Regulatory robust, regulatory robust, something along those lines. The, the, the regulation down the banking sector in Portugal is not as uh, yeah, robust as the likes of the US or in the UK. Uh, I personally wouldn't hold one and a half million euros in a Portuguese bank account. 
um, but it's an option. And of course, there's not really any interest from bank accounts at the moment either, um, compared to some parts of the world. So again, it's an option, but in my opinion, you know, you can do property from 280 and the returns are much higher at 500 than holding cash for account. There you go, but there are different routes to uh, the visa. So you can pick either or, we can assist in any of those categories. Uh, Property-wise, we have gone away and built a portfolio of properties that we have done our due diligence on, where we have checked out the developer and we are happy to put our name uh, to certain uh, developments in Portugal. Uh, we're not an estate agent, we're, we're not, you know, we're not showing property listings and hoping for the best. We uh, put in our three billion dollars of wealth management reputation uh, alongside this program. So again, naturally we do have to tread very carefully when we're making recommendations for different properties. So the ones that we have yet, yeah, we, we're happy we, we're happy that they are able to honor the incentives, we're happy that the properties are going to be built if they've not already been built. Uh, and of course, the buybacks uh, where applicable are concrete. Uh, on top of that, yeah, well, you know, like I say, the 500,000 mark, we actually have the most profitable investment of a visa anywhere in Portugal, uh, which is something that's exclusive to Holborn as well. And we also have the lowest capital to the visa. So it's actually 250, which I'm too um, Okay, but yeah, any questions on, I hope that's nice and clear, any questions on the criteria for what type of property to buy uh, or different routes to the visa, again, drop a message in the Q&A and we should come back to that towards the end. Okay, um, so the process, what's involved then? So this is a bit of a busy slide. Um, but I'll, I'll explain what we're looking at. It's quite a busy process, but we, uh, myself and, and my team, do all the heavy lifting for you. It is an all-encompassing service uh, with Holborn. Uh, step one, with my assistance, I can make a recommendation for different properties to consider or different investment options to qualify. And once you've found an investment that ticks your boxes, ticks the budget, and you're happy to proceed with, we can then start the process. First step is to apply for your Portuguese tax number. Before you can do anything in Portugal, you're going to have a tax number. We can get that within kind of two to three days. Very straightforward. Previously, the next step after that was actually setting up a bank account uh, in Portugal. Now, we've changed this slightly because the time it's taken to set up a bank account currently um, from abroad is about eight weeks, which makes it incredibly difficult and quite, quite risky to try and do that in the time that we have left. And we are no longer recommending that as a good option because the likelihood is you're not going to make the cut in time. So you have two other options. You can either fly into Portugal Okay, and you can set up, a, you can choose a bank like Millennium BCP, for example, and you can set up a bank account on the same day. Okay, super fast. Um, or what the majority of our clients are doing now is instead of setting up a bank at the outset, you set up your bank account after the application and you can use your lawyer's escrow account to transfer the funds to and to complete the deed, the purchase of the property on your behalf. Again, you can do that within a matter of days. Um, so managed to, we managed, like I say, managed to kind of circumnavigate that, that eight week delay of setting up a bank account. There are other ways of doing it. Um, the most popular option is to simply use your lawyer's escrow account and they will complete the deed. Um, but once that's done, you'll, once, once we've got your tax number, at least you will meet with your acting lawyer. Uh, actually, we'll go through the different employment, different legal contract. Um, you'll have a sale and purchase agreement. You'll have Obviously, rental agreement, you'll have a buyback agreement, certain development. Um, and of course, you complete the power of attorney, by allowing the lawyer to complete the purchase. On your Once that's done, you will transfer the funds to again, the lawyer or, or your Portuguese bank account if that's already in place. Uh, and you will complete the purchase of the property. The moment you've done that, as soon as you've completed the deed, we can then submit your application to sell. And uh, we have everything that we need. Um, that's the that's the safety point, really. We need we need to submit your application before um, before the law changes. And um, the fast the fastest we've done that so far is ten days. So that's this case. Uh, the I said previously it was taking a lot longer, but again now we're able to fast track applications within no more than four weeks, as long as you're able to provide us with the necessary documents quickly, and uh, we can get everything done super fast. 
along the way. Um, it's a good time before I forget to say that if in the event there are any delays with the application, or if the program is withdrawn sooner than expected, um, Holborn keep a clause in their contract that protects you as the investor against an early closure of the program or a delay in your application program process. Um, where both legal fees, if you paid legal fees, and if you paid a deposit on a property, which you do nine times out of 10, uh, will be fully refunded in the event that you're not able to submit your applications. And that's really important. Uh, you don't want to be paying a deposit on a property, which sometimes can be 10, 15 thousand euros, um, and then the program closes. So again, we make sure you have that protection, so you have no risk in starting the process. We have no real concern that we won't be able to meet the deadline at the moment. Um, but should we should we have any difficulties or should you have any difficulties uh, in meeting that deadline, you won't lose any money. But once we get to that point, we submitted your application um, and then, yeah, we, we kind of take it from there. My team keeps you up to date then throughout the process. Uh, we don't need you to do anything. We don't need to leave. We don't need you to leave home until really six months after we've submitted your application. Uh, at which point you'll need to fly into Portugal, and you'll meet with the lawyer to accompany you to the SAF office uh, to do your biometrics. You'll have your photo taken and your fingerprints taken, and um, it would be probably quite a stressful day. The queues at SAF are always quite extensive, but uh, nonetheless, there's worse places to be. Of course, here in Portugal, but either way, the lawyer will be there to help you with translation and, of course, the, the, the physical meeting with Seth at that time. Um, and then, shortly after, well, I say shortly after, generally about six months after that, you will expect to see, receive your visa, which will look a little bit like that. Um, that's it, really. The process from submission to receiving the, to receiving the visa will take about 12 months. Um, the, <laughs> Process again. We we manage. You have myself as a ultimately project manager, different teams and different parties involved in the transaction, um, and you'll always have a point of contact throughout um, to keep you up to date. Uh, so yeah, so that's the process. Um, piece of cake. That is. Um, but that's that's what we're doing behind the scenes. Uh, if you get any questions on that, please ask uh, in the Q and A box. Uh, once we receive the visa, okay, we're going to then have a two year visa. You can renew the visa every two years. Uh, you have full access to Portugal during that time. At the end, once you've held the visa for five years, that's when we will apply for your permanent residence and your citizenship. And then, of course, that's when you have access to all of Europe. And you just have five years to learn a bit of basic Portuguese in order to be able to do that. OK, right. So on that note, I've covered the most. As a quick recap, step one, find the investment that you like. Um, that'll take around four weeks then to submit your application. It'll take about 12 months to get the visa in hand. That lasts for two years to renew. Renew again in year four, and after year five, we apply for the passport. Okay, right, that's the process. That's the, what the golden visa is. Hopefully that's nice and clear. Uh, anything like more information on, again, drop a message in the Q&A. Um, I'm gonna fly through the properties relatively briefly. Um, there's obviously there's lot, I can tell you lots and lots about each of the developments. I want to get to the Q&A as quickly as I can. So any properties that, that you'd like the look of, please send me an email. You'll have my contact details as well at the end. Uh, but my email address is jason.swan at holbornassets.com. I'm just going to put that in the, in the chat box as well. Uh, I just need to know which developments that you'd like which ones you'd like a brochure for, um, and how many family members you would like to include on the visa. With that information, I can provide you with um, a full personalized cost breakdown and the brochures for each of the developments. Okay, right, so go in the group. Okay, so start at 280. Again, at 280, you generally find the investments are not as profitable, but Good news is you get a passport for half the amount of money that you would need to know. Uh, at the moment, uh, so th there's a building um, in Beja, inland of Portugal, uh, which is going to be a Holiday Inn hotel. 
which sure most people have heard of the holiday yet. Uh, the building is over 30 years old. It's going to be a full renovation, which is due to finish later this year. And it's in a low density area. It ticks all the boxes for 285 euros. When it's finished. It will look exactly as you see there in the photos. The proposition the developer ultimately says, hey, you can buy a share in our hotel if you like to qualify for your visa. And you can buy that share for 280,000 euros. Uh, you can invest along with 59 other investors, and you'll become a co-owner of the hotel. Your name will be on the deeds to the hotel, uh, which will qualify for the visa. And we will pay the majority of your taxes involved with the purchase, uh, which includes your IMT and the VAT, which is a saving of about 20,000 euros. Uh, we will buy the share back off you once you don't need it, once you have your passport. And you can stay in any of our hotels for seven days, free of charge, every year during that, those five years to maintain your residence. So really straightforward. There's no interest. There's no rental income. Uh, it is just a low capital route to get to the people. Uh, the hotels, uh, different hotel groups, it's not just a holiday inn, but there's a mixture of four and five star, four and five star hotels to choose from. And uh, yeah, that's it. it is, it's, a, it's a share option. You're not buying an individual room, you buy a share in the hotel. At the moment, there is still some availability at the Wyndham Hotel. Um, this one is currently the lowest capital route to the visa. Okay, and very similar to the first proposition, you can buy a share in this very nice Wyndham Hotel, which is due for the renovation to finish later this year. Uh, it's right on the waterfront uh, in a town called Alcazar del Sol. Um, and when it's finished, it will look exactly as you see there on the screen. The proposition is again, you can buy a share at 280,000 euros. You'll be a co owner of a four star Wyndham Garden hotel. And the developer, again, very substantial. They've been around for over 30 years. They have a very handsome portfolio of hotels previously in Portugal. They also will pay the taxes involved in purchase. They also will buy the share back off when you have your passport. So you don't need to worry about putting it on the market or lawyers. The big incentive with this one, however, is that they will pay a rental income or a cashback, if you will, of 30,000 euros as an upfront payment. So as soon as you complete, you get 30,000 euros back. And effectively, you're buying your share at 250. And then you're going to sell it back at 280 when you've got your passport, making a very clear profit of 30,000 euros, which comfortably pays for the different costs involved for the government and the legal fees, if applicable, along the way. Uh, and a nice profit, depending on how many family members that you wish to have. Um, and you can stay for seven days in any of the hotels, each of free of charge. So at the moment, uh, this, as of Monday, just so everyone is aware, the developer has informed of us that as of Monday, they're going to reduce the 30,000 to 20,000. Uh, and at last check, there was only a handful of slots left at the window. So if you do like the look of this one, please, I would encourage you to drop me an email straight away so I can get some costings to you with the brochures and we can speak before uh, before next week. Um, that's door number two. Door number three, Yellow Tulip in Alvor, one of my personal favorites. This one is not too far from where I live uh, in the Algarve. This hotel is already built. A photo was taken in summertime last year. Uh, it's already a four-star hotel on booking.com. However, it is very dated um, and the renovation started January this year, so recently closed. The renovation will be done uh, towards the end of this year. There's going to be new sports facilities, new tennis court, there'll be a volleyball court, there'll be pools, indoor and outdoor, are being rebuilt. The restaurant being redone. There's going to be a nice bar restaurant added outside as well. Uh, all the rooms, all the furniture, all the common areas are going to be completely refurbished. And when it's finished, it will be as, as new, all inclusive four star hotel, as you can see, very close to the water. Uh, I'll just draw your attention briefly to that white hotel just behind. We're coming on to that one shortly, which is the Pelican Hotel, both of which in our book. Um, again, this photo taken in summer to last year. The proposition with this one, instead of buying a hotel share, you're now buying a, you're actually buying a full title deed. You're buying the property, an individual property in the development. Um, and depending on the floor and depending on which side of the hotel, price varies between 280 to 295. Um, the developer pays 
all of the taxes, including stamp duties, there's literally zero. The, the other share options have a little bit of stamp duty of around 2,000 to pay. Uh, this, however, has zero tax at all. The buyback is still in place. You still have a guaranteed buyback in a worst case scenario to get the money back. However, it is an optional buyback, meaning that if property prices go up in the next five years, like they have in the last five years, uh, you get the option to keep it or to sell it on the open market for a higher price. Uh, if you do rent it, so if you do keep it, however, uh, it will pay a rental income from year six. And the rental income will work out around five to six percent per year, which is a 50 percent share of the rent. The hotel manages all of the apartments. They're fully responsible for the marketing, the maintenance, the cleaning and the check-ins. Uh, and they simply will pay you 50 percent. Uh, as a regular income, of which you would expect 5 to 6% per year. Lastly, you can stay in the hotel for two weeks, free of charge every year, instead of just the one week. Uh, so again, slightly different. There's an, there's an argument for both a hotel share and a full title deed. Uh, again, there's still some availability at the, uh, at the, at the yellow tulip. You know, well. Again, any questions on that? Fire them in the Q and A. Uh, again, any request if you'd like a breakdown in costs and the brochures, please ask. And I'll fire those over to you this week. Uh, okay, the honourable mentions, if you like. I don't think there's a huge incentive to invest between two hundred and eighty and five hundred. I don't think you get the benefits of both of either, should I say? However, there are some uh, other honourable mentions. There's a development at Lisbon uh, Airport. Uh, again, you can buy a share in the hotel, this time for 350,000. Uh, it's exactly the same as, as the holiday on paper, apart from there's a small return payable uh, of 3% per year from when the hotel is built. Uh, so in summary, it's an extra 70,000 investment, a little bit extra return. Um, there's a development in Porto that we like as well. Um, when it's all finished, it will be a self-contained, um, self-managed apartment. The qualifying criteria is 350. Uh, it's full title deed purchase as a rental income guaranteed at 3.5% per year for five years. However, there's no buyback on this one. Uh, so you would have to just simply sell it on the open market. Again, you've got to be mindful of cost to do that. Estate agency fees, there'll be a lawyer fee payable to do that. So you've got to bear that in mind as the overall cost of the investment. Personally, I think a buyback is a, is a good thing to have. Uh, a, because you have a guaranteed worst case sale price and there's no cost to sell either. Um, but it's a good it's a good option, it's a good development, very nice part of Porto. Uh, you can stay there for up to seven days per year. And if you want to be in Porto, then it's a good option. Uh, the Pelican Alvo. Okay, Pelican, um, again, one of my personal favorites. This one has already been built, it's already renovated. Um, very nice, very nice hotel. Uh, there's a mixture of one bedroom and two bedroom apartments for sale. Uh, there is unfortunately just one. Uh, there is literally one one bed left for sale. There are still uh, there are still some two beds for sale. Um, the incentive with this pelican is that the developer pays a rental income, uh, and on the one beds they pay five point two percent per year, um, for, and they pay six years rental income up front. And on the two beds, they pay 4% per year, which is still not too bad. Again, paying, um, paying six years up front, which allows you to basically buy one bed at 400. But when they pay the rental income up front, you only need 306,000. And for the two beds at 450, after the rental income paid, you only need 369, both of which have a buyback at 400 and 450. Okay, so very clear profit margin between the two. It comfortably pays for the cost of passports uh, and, of course, a very healthy profit at the end as well. Uh, you have a guaranteed buyback should you wish to use it. However, it's optional. Again, you can open, you can sell it on the open market. You can rent it as long as you like, uh, if you wish, and continue with that rental for years to come. And you can stay in the hotel for four weeks every day. Um, so again, slightly more capital required for the investment, but a bigger incentive as far well. The return. Last but not least, um, officially the most profitable golden visa qualifying investment in Portugal right now is the Royal Obidos. And um, this one 
uh, is a five-star golf and spa resort. It's actually built on a PGA golf course, uh, about half an hour, 40 minutes from, from north of Lisbon on the Silver Coast. Um, the hotel itself is not for sale. However, the apartments in the front, as you can see there, they're a mixture of one bedroom and studio apartments. Um, all sea view, all sea facing, all, all overlooking the golf course. A very nice place to be. The development qualified at 500,000 with it being a new build. Um, so you have an option of buying two studio apartments for 350 each, or you can buy a one bed at 500,000. The rental income before tax is actually 7% per year, which is fixed. After tax, it comes to 5.25%. And the developer will pay five years, five years rental income up from as part of the purchase. Similar to the Pelican, um, makes a big difference. So if you get a two studios, instead of paying 700,000, you pay just 500,000. You get 200,000 in rental income, 500,000 from you, buying at 700. Okay, and then you have the buyback at 700. The one bed, Again, buying at 368 and a buyback at 500,000. Buyback is optional and they only can stay there for six weeks per year. Or what we did for a client not too long back is we arranged for them to have three weeks per year but have two properties so that they could bring some of the family. Um, but yeah, I love this development, really nice. And uh, like I say, it's a fixed rental of 7% per year before tax. So you don't get many asset backs investments that you can stay in for six weeks per year in seven percent per year um, with the option to sell for a profit so it takes a lot of boxes but that is that's the that's our recommended portfolio at the moment um we're not we're not seeing any new developments come to market since the announcement in february developers have been quite clear that until they know how long they're going to have left to sell property they just can't continue to build, certainly not for the fees or anyway. Um, so yeah, since February, there's been no new no new stock. So once these once these properties are sold, um, I think that'll be it, unless, unless the program is extended until December. Um, yeah, th those are the best developments in Portugal. So so there you go. So that, that, I hope that was helpful. Um, I've crashed course through quite a lot, just in the day. I would like to leave myself a little bit longer for the Q&A, but we don't need to rush. Um, just before we jump into the questions, you have my details on the screen. Uh, please do send me an email for any questions around the developments or the process. Um, all the brochures are available to download. Uh, if you would like a Portuguese tax guide, if you need any advice around NHR, uh, the general transition of moving to Portugal for you or your family, uh, you can do that. The cost illustrations, again, the, the costs vary simply depending upon the cost of property and the number of family members that you wish to include in the visa. Uh, but I can provide a full breakdown of, of the property costs, the taxes, and the you know, legal fees as well. Uh, stock availability, I can check on which apartments, which numbers are still available. Uh, and again, if you'd like to book in for a one-to-one -one meeting, uh, please do, I think there's some availability from Monday onwards. Uh, and just send me an email to do so. So, other than that, um, Let's see what questions we've got. Um, okay, first question is income on an earned or remittance basis. Um, I'd like to clarify that, please, Mr. Anonymous. Uh, the income varies depending upon the development. First of all, if it's paid up front, it's a one off payment. Uh, in fact, none of the development pay regular income. It's always a one off upfront payment, unless from year six, then if you keep the property, it would be then a recurring. Um, okay, my understanding is that the area is covered by the Villa de Bispo and Alijor Council still qualify for residential purchases and that both are classified as low density. Is this correct? Um, I would say I would look at that on a case by case basis. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head if they come under low density. Pretty easy to find out. Right, again, send me, if you can send me a quick email as a reminder, I should look into that for you and come back to you. Um, okay, so other than that, um, I had some questions before the webinar coming in as well. We've got a few minutes to finish off, so if anyone...
one would like to ask, ask, ask any questions, please do so in the Q and A. And just bring up any questions we can. From the registration, please just start off. Is there still time to apply for the golden visa? Yes, there is. I think we've covered that one off in enough detail. So again, um, the program is still open. We can apply as normal, but it's fine. We just need to make sure we submit the application before the law comes into effect when the program is finished. Uh, what is the minimum criteria for the property? Minimum criteria, as we said, is 280,000, um, depending on the property. So 280,000 for low density in a commercial development that is over 30 years old. Uh, 350 doesn't need to be in a low density area. 500 you can qualify across the board. Uh, can we buy a second property and qualify for the visa retrospectively? Um, if, uh, if, I, if I assume your question correctly, if you already had the property, you cannot apply retrospectively. Um, it must be a new property purchase. It qualifies under the current rules. Again, if you'd like me to check that out, please send me an email, jason.swan at fold1assets.com. That would do so. All right, I can't find my registration. I can't find the second page. So, um, yeah, apologies if I've missed anyone's questions. Please do drop them in the box for me. Uh, hi there, Ravi. Uh, if one found a residential property oneself, does the sale have to be completed before the application can be made? And is there any realistic chance of conveyancing and completing in time? Um, the completion does have to be does have to complete before you can submit your application. You have to be the owner of the investment before you can submit uh, for the application. So the, the challenging part, Ravi, with residential property, uh, unlike an investment where you can just look at the numbers, you can choose an investment from home. Um, residential property is, of course, much more of an emotional decision and somewhere you'd probably want to check out the area and, and make sure it's somewhere where you would want to live. So you've got a lot to do in a short period of time. But if you did find a residential property that you liked that was inland, that qualified, um, then, yeah, as long as you start the conveyancing process within... Two weeks, maximum two weeks, I'd say within the next week or so, it's death to, to kind of guarantee beating the deadline. But yeah, as long as so within the next two weeks, as long as you've got a good lawyer, then yeah, you should do it. 